City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at Consolidated.com. Hello and welcome to City Spotlight. We found our way to the end of another season here on City Spotlight, Season 7. Wow. Taping for Season 7 of City Spotlight began last August, August of 2020, through now, which is August of 2021. Nearly all of the focus of this season of City Spotlight has focused on communities here in central and southeastern Illinois as they've navigated through COVID-19. I'd like to thank the communities and their leaders for sharing how their individual community has handled and forged forward through these trying times. Speaking of communities, another season and more communities featured here on City Spotlight. Here in Season 7, we featured three first-time communities, Sullivan, Newton, and Teutopolis. In total, 20 communities have been featured through seven seasons of City Spotlight. Plus, we also just passed our 150th episode. So to conclude this seventh season of City Spotlight, we're going to feature extended cuts of two things you saw here in the second half of Season 7 of City Spotlight. Back in May and June, we taped episodes on Toledo and Arcola, respectively. In those episodes, we talked and shared visuals on the Toledo Spring Festival and the Raggedy Ann Rally. Here in this final episode of this season of City Spotlight, we'll have many more visuals and sounds from those events that took place in Toledo and Arcola for your enjoyment. And now let's dive into the extended sights and sounds from the Toledo Spring Festival and Raggedy Ann Rally as we close here on Season 7 of City Spotlight. We look forward to, in the very near future, Season 8 of City Spotlight as we continue to cover communities across central and southeastern Illinois. Thanks for watching. Been a resident of Toledo since 1969. Mm -hmm. uh, been a mayor, a trustee of the community, uh, very active in our uh, volunteer program, the Toledo Volunteers. Uh, I'm also on some other committees here in the community, in the county, but uh, right now I am the chairperson for the Toledo Spring Festival, and I have excellent, excellent help, and I use the help, right? Uh, that makes this festival something very enjoyable for everyone. Fantastic. Before we, before we talk about the current Spring Festival, uh, Give us a brief history of the festival. Okay. I, I know it's 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 happened at different times and uh, even different names. So tell right. us about the, the okay. History. 1948 mm -hmm. was the first time we had a community celebration, and it was uh, the topic at that time was the soy bean, <laughs> uh, and we called it the Soa Festival. Uh, in uh, 1949. It was uh, a tribute to a country doctor we had here, Dr. Rhodes, mm -hmm. and they honored Dr. Rhodes and all of the babies that he had uh, delivered here in the Toledo area. Then in 50, it became a festival, mm -hmm. and it was always late in the fall, uh, late as October, and it just kept moving up earlier and earlier. Mm -hmm. And in 56 and 57, we did not have a festival because the community was putting in storm sewers. Right. So in 1958, we started again with a festival, to, and it was always in the fall, always in September. And then uh, the committee of uh, fellow Kwanians at the time, the Toledo Kiwanis was very active in, in our community, and, and a lot of the members were members of the festival mm -hmm. committee. They, uh, this committee went to Springfield at the annual county fair convention. Mm -hmm. They visited and found a, a carnival, which they had went to Shelbyville, I believe, earlier in uh, seeing their carnival, noted it was an excellent carnival. We hired them, er, we asked them to come to Toledo, which they did, mm -hmm. and this is our 63rd year right. with the same festival. And uh, we went through two generations 
of the Lures family, and mm -hmm. they've all became honorary citizens of Toledo. So uh, back in 1968, uh, the mayor at that time, Scott Everhart, mm -hmm. uh, proclaimed that uh, the carnival owners, Hubbard and, and Winnie Lures, mm -hmm. as honorary citizens, and then later on we did that with also their children. Right. So it's been a festival for many years. Mm -hmm. We used to compete with uh, our Colas Broomcorn Days. Right. It was always the same weekend. So, However, it was, so it was a fall festival. It was still the fall festival. In 1989, uh, the Lures family came to me and said, or the end of the uh, 1950, uh, no, 19. 88, mm -hmm. stating that we need to move to the spring mm -hmm. from fall because they were going through our area from point A to point B and we're in the middle. Correct. And gasoline prices had increased in diesel fuel. Right. And they asked to move it to spring. Right. I fought that because of the tradition of in the fall. Right. But uh, in reality, we, we had to do it and it's the best decision we ever made because we not longer was the last festival in the area, we were the first. And people were ready to get out and enjoy the festivals early in the spring. And so it's been a success since. So it's been a spring festival. If I do my math right there, a little over 30 years, it's been the Toledo Spring Festival. That's right. All right, so obviously 2020 was a strange and tough year for, for everyone, and uh, the Spring Festival had to take a year off. Is that, that's correct. correct. That is so correct. what was that like when the 2021 came around and it, it happened the other night, or the other, this past week? When, when I, was, I have been in touch with uh, one of the owners, Andy Shane, since uh, January, and we kept talking about COVID and the pandemic, and and he was working with the state of Illinois in regards to healthy uh, health concerns of spreading the virus. And he, uh, he got the green light from the state on procedures of what we could do. And I said, let's do it. Let's commit. We will follow guidelines, but let's have a festival. There are some communities that have a decided to do it but this year we did and it has been fantastic. I was here Friday night uh, and Saturday for the parade obviously a big parade a big part of the, the festival as it was. Um, what was that like for it to have, take place? What was it like to have people and everything going on there? I mean, it was tough not having it last year, but for it to be back, uh, there was a lot of energy in the community over the weekend, wasn't there? Energy. Yes, there was. But when uh, Lorelai and Andy, the, the carnival owners, came in on Monday morning, I went out to greet them and welcome to the community. And they said, Larry, be expected to see a huge crowd. And I was still thinking, oh, I'm not negative, but I was conservative thinking, well, we may have a few extras. But come Thursday evening, we had, uh, we had record crowds, record uh, kids riding rides, and it went through all weekend. It was just phenomenal of what happened in Toledo in our small community to draw in that big of a crowd and it we welcome the the area communities that come through us to, from Coles County, Effingham County, Jasper County, Clark County. Uh, they know that we do have a wonderful clean carnival. <laughs> It's just a safe environment for your family, and uh, it just it's it's a pride to have that uh, the carnival with us. Parade on Saturday, uh, I think I think it ended uh, after about 45 minutes. So a good long healthy parade there. Lots of organizations, vehicles, 
uh, from many communities, not just uh, Toledo, Cumberland County, mm -hmm. pro, uh, around Courthouse Square. What, what a beautiful sight that was, and, and lots of people enjoyed it. The, you know, the parade, uh, I'm going to give an accolade to the First Neighbor Bank. Their employees have committed to organize the parade, and it's not a small feat. You know, trying to get, I, I've done it. Uh, you know, I'm yes. one of these hat, uh, people that I wore every hat in the festival. <laughs> I mean, every hat that needs to be done, I've done it. But the parade is a big responsibility, and the crew from that bank has stepped up for the last several, several years and, and organized the parade, and it is good. And there's a lot of people from the origin of the parade down on uh, by the Toledo Depot mm -hmm. all the way to the square and then when you come around the square there's there's a crowd here but it's not just a small crowd here it's all the way through right. and it's it's nice you know We're going to be bragging about this festival for years to come. Uh, I, I don't know, it's very hard to uh, understand that we will have this big of a crowd next year, but it, it was just a, uh, a joy to me and everybody else that worked the festival to see all these people here. And it was. And, and they were enjoying themselves. Uh, the weather was perfect. Uh, we have had rain outs before, right. and we will have rain outs again. But this week was uh, a perfect, perfect weekend for people to enjoy our Toledo Spring Festival. Do you have a Do you have a favorite thing about the festival, or do you just enjoy it all? I yes, I do have a favorite thing. Uh, <laughs> I was walking through the Midway uh, Saturday afternoon, mm -hmm. no, Friday evening, Friday evening, and I watched a mother and her young son. I'm going to get emotional. Uh, the little boy was extremely excited. He was just the right height right. that he could ride. Awesome. And I stood back and watched this young man, and he was jumping and he was clapping. And mom was encouraging him to be excited. So he got on this ride and he was going, oh, can't wait, I can't wait, can't wait. And then when that scrambler took off and threw him against that side, his eyes got this big around and smile, don't know who they were, right. but that smile on that boy left a lasting impression of a ride that he could enjoy. Saw a lot of happy children there on Friday night enjoying I did. those rides, and uh, thank you for that. I what mean, it's just, saw. that's what it's all about, to create that atmosphere that people can enjoy. They visit with individuals they haven't seen for a while. Uh, it's like a homecoming. That's what the festival really started out was a time for uh residents and relatives and individuals that's moved away that have came back and it was a, it was really a homecoming to start with and it just had grown and grown and grown over the years my husband john and i um, have collected raggedy ann and andy for approximately 35 years and there has been a rally here in Arcola for about 32, so we're all in. Well, we went to an antique show in Indianapolis that featured Raggedy Ann and Andy. And we shopped it, and we saw this little raggedy, cute little raggedy face, and we thought, oh, that is so cute, we want it. But we had little kids, so we thought, no, we can't spend that money. So we went home, and it just kept preying on our mind. What that, oh, that's so cute. So I called the dealer back. Well, of course, that was gone. So it was kind of like the fish story that got away. Now we wanted him. So we've aggressively 
chased after raggedies and bought them. Let's remind our audience just briefly the history of Raggedy Ann and Andy here in Arcola. Raggedy Ann is a doll that was made by Johnny Gruel and he, he was the author of books and he illustrated books, but he actually had a daughter named Marcella that was given a vaccination that ended up killing her. And she, um, to entertain her because she was sick for a while, to entertain her, he had taken this doll, the little doll, and he, you know, painted it up. And then he told stories about that little doll to Marcella. And that was entertainment for her. And then after she passed away, he found some people to publish those stories. And it came from, that's where it came from. Johnny was born here in Arcola. So that's actually the Arcola connection. Very good. And if you've been to Arcola, downtown Arcola, there's all kinds of uh, Raggedy Ann and Andy uh, signage, visuals. There's a, a, a wall mur dogs. The wall dogs murals came back several years back. So you can find Raggedy Ann and Andy visually just about anywhere, any corner in Arcola. So you briefly mentioned at the beginning of the interview how long the rally has been going on. How did that come to be? Why did, why did they need to have a rally? For, I mean, I, and I know why, but why did they need a rally for Raggedy Ann and Andy? And, and well, I think that we kind of, you know, talked about it, different people, different um, store people, and then it got, um, went through to the Arcola Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. and the Arcola Chamber, a couple of ladies, Doris Knaus and Annette Ferguson, started in, and um, we helped them at the beginning of that, and that was 1989. Right. We helped them um, find people and get vendors, and not so much, they did a lot, of, trust me, they did a lot of work. And it was at that time a street festival. Mm -hmm. And they kind of looked at that street festival as a thank you to all the people that put the hard work in for the broom corn festival. Right. So we have had, we have had a street festival and at one time we had people here from, a huge entourage of people here from Japan. Wow. They would dress up and make these gorgeous costumes, parade up and down the street. There was a parade also. Right. But um, we've become an international, an international event at that wow. point. Tell and us thousands, there were thousands, thousands of people here. We're trying to bring that back. I'm originally from Miami, and since the year 1971, since I was born, I was born December 24th, 1971, and I was born with a Raggedy Ann doll. <laughs> I learned that Raggedy Ann had ethnic dolls, so I'm here to bring awareness to millennials and, you know, that, wow, I didn't know. I had a Farrah Fawcett doll. I had a Barbie doll. My dolls were all Caucasian dolls. <laughs> Tell us about the people that are fans of Raggedy Ann and Andy. All walks of life. There are people from all walks of life. Um, but the common thing is the love of that little red-haired dolly. <laughs> and the thing is, that little red-haired dolly started in the 19 teens, but she has gone through history. She's gone through wars. She's gone through all kinds of things, the hippie era, everything. Right. And it's still there. Wow. It's still there. We have a we have a community. We have a love for each other. Mm -hmm. We have a com comrade feeling towards each other. There's nobody that comes that is um, not completely embraced by this community. A, a, new, a new person mm -hmm. that comes is totally embraced. It doesn't matter who wow. you are, what you look like, what you, you know, how much money's in your pocket, although you probably need some money in your pocket to buy a bunch <laughs> of, because you're gonna find stuff you want here. Right. But it, honestly, there is, it, it's just a loving community. Have you been to one of these rallies in Arcola before? This is my first time and I am so like my eyes are like popping out all over the place. I'm like, <laughs> I am so glad. I mean, the love. We have people from 20 different states registered. There might be some more that I haven't caught yet, but I, I can document 20 different states coming to this weekend. The Nickel auction got started by a lady at my church several years ago because we were all a bunch of stay-at-home moms and we didn't have any money and we had a whole bunch of stuff that we didn't use anymore. So the Nickel auction became a thing. 
Normally what will happen is I will hold up an item and we start the bid at five cents. My shirt says love, lady. We're spreading love. We have a nickel auction and we have our own homegrown auctioneer named Greta Eber. And so and why do you call it a nickel auction? Well, that's really good. It's supposed to be a nickel increment, but I'm going to tell you what. It has been known to be $10 increments okay. on really... So, so the nickel is the starting point. That's the name of the auction. Next is the big banquet at five, at 6 o'clock in the Masonic building here in Arcola. Downtown Arcola. And it's a, it is a banquet. It's nice to meet you. I love meeting people for the first time. I'm almost positive that this store right here is one I bought in 1997 or 98. I ended up selling it. I don't know who it belongs to. I need to find out who it belongs to. I don't know. It's so like cute. Mine's got like a couple of strands. <laughs> <laughs> I bought one today. His arm's falling off. Really? I took Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his little arm's barely hanging on. It's like. Oh. Food or truck? You didn't fly on a plane. New Hampshire, that's pretty far. Oh. Did anyone think they drove farther than New Hampshire? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. They drove to California. with what Santa had brought that they almost didn't see that there, under the tree, right next to Raggedy Ann, sat an honest to goodness Raggedy Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we move on to Saturday, June 12th, the second day of festivities. What's happening on that day? This building will be open to the public. Feast on the visual delights of Raggedy Ann and Andy. Oh, lots of red in the eyes. She's my sister. Ah, uh, <laughs> life size and all. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Raggy. <laughs> Hello, Ann. Hey, Ann. Wow, I've never seen so many Raggedies in one place in my entire life. And the fact that I fit in and like family and they love me, it, I'm, I'm just, I just feel right at home. So why are you dressed up? Um, uh, well, Cheryl uh, and Charles Platt, they're from Macon as well. We were, it, it, it was shocked how I got to know them. And she um, gave me this outfit. And I said, when I go, I'm going to wear it. I'm just so proud to be a part. I'm proud to feel like I'm at home. And I just said, I'm going to wear it. So I dressed up in my raggedy. <laughs> dressed up as a raggedy yourself? Yeah, I'm a raggedy. How, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel a part of the family. <laughs> <laughs> Despite the color of my skin, <laughs> it's the color of my heart. I have a real raggedy heart there. <laughs> oh, how cute! Oh, how darling! Raggedy sleeping yes. bag. Yes. Oh, good morning! That thing is life size. Uh, my grandson that showed up yesterday. This is the way he gets to sleep when he comes to Grandy's house. <laughs> That's an early transition set. Oh, okay. What do you want people that come to this rally and celebration for Raggedy Ann and Andy, what do you want them to take away from this experience? I think, you know, Johnny Grill had a very big and good loving heart. And that's why he put that heart, the original dolls had a heart, every true Raggedy has a heart. And he, he, wanted, he wanted that to be known, mm -hmm. having a heart. And 
I think that that universal acceptance and love and community feeling that our group has, mm -hmm. I think that he wants, he would want that to be everywhere. And so that's really kind of the, the message. That's beautiful. And I want to ask you one more question. How does, how does Raggedy, when you look at a Raggedy Ann and Andy doll, how does it make you feel? Oh, smiling and happy. By me being a newbie, I mean everything. I'm excited about it all. I'm grateful. I, I'm just taking it all in. I'm just so happy to be here. Like the history that I'm learning, um, just among families, lovers of the doll, the brand, I, I'm just excited. Um, I didn't understand it then, you know, growing up, like I said, raggedy. Anne was always there later on. I never had an Andy doll till now, but I've always had an Anne doll. I got my first Andy doll here, so I'm so excited. I'm, I'm over the moon. <laughs> when I was getting my ears pierced, I was like four years old, and I had my Anne doll with me. Um, it was a shock, you know, as they pierced the ears, but when I looked at her, she wasn't crying or anything, so I was like, well, since she was such a big girl, it made me be a big girl. I mean, just the company of, you know, having that doll. The whole thing is just phenomenal. I'm, 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 I'm glad to be here. I'm happy that I was invited to come. I got a picture with myself um, on the bench. I, I'm just excited. You told me something about this rally. What did you tell me? That it's magical. This is the most magical experience. So, Why? You meet people, you make long-lasting friendships. Some of these people I've known for years. Other people I have just met or met on Facebook and actually get to hug them, but it is, we're like family and the spreading the joy and kindness to other people. And that that's what the dolls represent. Love, kindness, family, friendship. Acceptance. And it's you, yes, acceptance. And it just brings people together and Johnny Gorilla's legacy through that little doll just brings people together. The stories that you hear of people getting their first dolls, whether they're young or old, it's, it's a multi-generational legacy of love from Johnny Gorilla, and we're just so grateful for it. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.